Welcome to Cutting Edge Web Content Development, the podcast where we delve into the world of CMS systems and their crucial role in website and web content development. In each episode, we'll explore the reasons why founders, CEOs, CTOs, and CMOs of web content development companies need CMS systems to thrive in the digital landscape. Get ready to uncover the secrets behind successful website management, content creation, and seamless user experiences. Here's your host, Jonathan Ames. Welcome to Cutting Edge Web Content Development, a podcast by Butter CMS. Today, we have Steven Schneider, the co-founder and CEO of Trios SEO, and he's here to discuss high intent traffic to drive growth. Welcome, Steven. Hi, thanks for having me. Tell us how you got into SEO. What drew you to it? And what are some of the projects you've worked on? Yeah, so it's kind of a little bit of a dumb luck story, which is kind of fun living. But yeah, so it happened way back when in college. And uh, yeah, I was on the finance MBA fast track. Didn't really have a goal. Just was going to do my four years, kind of get my degree and move on with life. And while working on a class project with a friend of mine, he told me that he was creating websites and blogs on the side and I uh, had this little business and I was like, yeah, right. What could you possibly be doing on the side that's actually like a business of sorts? And yeah, he was actually doing affiliate marketing and Amazon affiliate kind of heyday and was making upwards of like 10 to 15 grand per month in college. And was just doing the four years of college because that's what his parents said was best and it was good to get his degree. But literally had no intention of <laughs> being, you know, using his degree for anything outside of being framed on his wall. So once I learned about that, I was pretty quickly hooked on what SEO was and what it could really offer. And I just became a sponge. I looked to him as a mentor and just been like everything I could soak up. And one thing led to another. He'd give me an article to go read and come back and turn into a course. And then at some point he just said, like, here's the website. You can't break it. Do what you want with it. Figure it out. But like, here's your playground of sorts. And so that's what I did. And uh, flash forward to post-graduation, we went all in on that with his other business partner. And we had about 40 websites owned together with the whole kind of portfolio. And we were doing about three to 400 articles per month and scaled out seven figures. So it was a pretty fun ride, definitely a crash course into SEO. But now I get to take all the strategies of content and SEO and apply them to client sites. Oh, that's exciting. It's, the way I've seen most great SEOs get started is just what you said. So talk about this strategy of high intent SEO for blogs and sales pages. What do you mean by high intent and how can you use that for growth? Yeah, I think to start, many believe that blogging is dead or at least it's on the way out. <laughs> I think it's, it's fair to assume just because people are like, yeah, what's the purpose of a blog? There's really no point. And then they get a bad rap because people often go after the wrong topics when looking at their blog. And so we think about the marketing funnel, which we've all lit, breathing, sleep, the top of funnel, mid and bottom funnel journey when it comes to the customer side of things. We take that same approach and look at it from a topic psychological perspective from how people are searching topics within a blog and how those align to high intent bottom of funnel traffic. So when we look at our blog strategy for clients, we go after all that high intent traffic first and make sure that our clients tackle all that traffic from the start. So high intent in, in this definition is they are wanting to do something at the bottom of the funnel where they're close to either becoming a lead or a sale. Right, exactly. All right. So it seems like everyone would want to go after those kind of high intent keywords. How do you create a content strategy where you can be competitive for this? Yeah, it's a great question. So some of them are pretty competitive. So there's really no way around that. What we do is we try and go after long tail keywords. And those long tail keywords are going to be a little more niche. They might have a little bit of some extra phrases in them. So for example, instead of it like best running shoes, it might be best wide running shoes for plantar fasciitis or something like that, where it's like super long tail, very niche. Like that person has a very specific goal in mind and it's to find a shoe that fits them. And so when we go after those very specific phrases, you can likely attach that to better conversion rates and a more invested customer. I definitely see that working like you use the example for like an e-commerce situation. What about for things that maybe are a little more broad like SaaS or B2B? Yeah, so let me see if I can tap into some of our clients. And so with like we have a, a client in the mergers and acquisition space. And so a lot of their acquisition through organic search will come in through 
people who are looking to sell their companies or are in that kind of discovery phase for what those next steps look like. And so a lot of the topics that we went after on their site are going to be how to sell my Shopify business, how to sell my car dealership or engineering firm valuations, something like that, where it's usually like insert business industry with valuation or how much can I sell my business for all that sort of stuff. And then we would write a 1500 word article about the ins and outs of that process, what their valuations might look like and how they can get in touch with that team. Wow. So it's even something short, like 50 and 100 words you can rank? 1,500 to 2,000 is like that, that oh, sweet 1500. spot. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, you said 50 to 100. I was just like, one sentence. Like, that's all you need. <laughs> 1,500 to 2,000. All right, it makes more sense. Yeah. Okay, so you've got these high intent keywords. Any tips around how you would pick the right keywords? Is that something that a layman could do or does that really take a specialist? Yeah, that's definitely where we have our expertise come into play. What we do is we take like a full landscape. So we'll do 10, 20 plus hours of keyword research and just collect everything under the sun. It might be hundreds of keywords. And then we'll use our best guess based on competition, based on the current standing of the client's site, and just kind of gut feeling based on experience of what we think this client can tackle. And then we bring that with a kind of a 90 day strategy to the client and say, hey, here's what we're thinking. Let us know where we're off base or what you'd think. Because at the end of the day, Business owners know their business best. I'm not trying to step on any toes. And so we come to them with a plan and they say, hey, this looks great. Let's actually switch these two topics and maybe do those first or let's just scrap those all together. They're not the best intent right now for our goals. So it's a very collaborative process and we can use our expertise and data and then their kind of insight on what they know from the business. Okay. And with another kind of tactical question, with these high intent keywords, would you send them to a blog page or would you send them to like a, a sales page with a contact form or a, a purchase form? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. So we would either go after a blog, which is our specialty, which would be standard articles, a couple thousand words or under that ballpark. And then in other cases, if we see that there's an opportunity to create a landing page or a service page, we would go after that sort of content. And the content would obviously be much different copy. It's more conversion focused. It's meant to teach people and build people into the brand. And then obviously set that up with CTAs or forms or whatever works best for the brand. But yeah, those are kind of the two products, so to speak, within our company. And we take a look at whatever is the best based on the intent for that keyword. Because every keyword is going to be, whether it's e-commerce or informational, whatever that might be. Okay. So with the blog post, you would have it linked to some kind of a lead capture or a purchase page. With some of these keywords, you might have them drop directly on a landing page or a services page. Yeah, and even within a blog, like it's really common to see accident intent pop-ups that maybe direct people to a newsletter. In some cases, like blogs are not typically the best immediate purchase funnel, but they're really good for driving lots of traffic. And then that traffic can be sent into nurture sequences or lead magnets or newsletters. So what we always like to say is that we'll bring you the best high quality traffic and then it's a collaborative process to leverage that traffic as best as possible and make sure that your team is seeing the race through and making sure that there's all those steps in place to work with the, the traffic from there on out. Okay, so we've got this idea, this strategy around going after the high intent keywords. You're going to put them either to a blog or to a, a sales page of some sort. What are the most critical elements to make that content succeed, to, to be able to rank for it? Yeah, surprisingly, one of the best things is less is more. When it comes to a blog, I mean, obviously, you want to make sure that it covers all different parts to the puzzle, so to speak. And it's in that ballpark of the 1,500 words is. But at the same time, people don't want to read fluff. They don't want to read a lot of BS content, and they want to get to the point. And so with all of our content, we start with a small reduction, and then we'll provide a TLDR, too long, didn't read, summary overview that just gives people the information they need immediately. And that just builds in trust so that they can continue expanding on that topic. And then on top of that, making sure that it's a great user experience. Is it flow well? Is the font readable? It's not too much text on page to the pictures fit. Just making sure that you were in that point of view, how would you be responding to that content? And then creating an experience from start to finish that works with the brand. So let's say you've got existing content, maybe you're ranking, but it's not ranking really well. Do you have some tips around improving that content so you can get greater effectiveness and reach? 
Yeah, absolutely. Updates and upgrades are the best, biggest hack in SEO, either from like an offensive or a defensive strategy. So say that you're right outside the top 10 and you want to try and break into a top ranking spot, take a look at what other competitors are doing and see maybe you're missing a key section or maybe you don't have FAQs. Potentially, it's just out of date. Maybe you published it two years ago and it just needs a relevant update to it. Do you have an author bio? Do you have all the trust factors and credibility that speaks to your expertise? A lot of that is really easy to build in, especially at a template level. But Google likes fresh content as readers do too. So as you're revisiting your strategy, we suggest like an update every six to 12 months, regardless of whether that's a blog or a service page, just to ensure that readers and Google know that you're active and it's relevant to the search overall. So you've got all this, these things you're doing to improve these pages or to create them. How do you judge success? What are the metrics or the KPIs that you focus on to know this was successful? Yeah, so we track number of impressions, we t- track the, the click-through rate, the clicks, the overall traffic to the site, the growth on that weekly and monthly and just how things are progressing. And we also look at keyword rankings to see how they're matched up relative to what we thought they were going to go after. And then there's a bunch of secondary keywords too. So that's another misconception is that blogs are not like one-to-one with the keyword you're tackling. Although you might have a primary keyword, there's going to be maybe 50 to 100 other keywords per blog. And so we take a look at how those are performing as well. So there's a lot of data to play with. And it just really comes down to how effective that site is performing kind of relative to the initial hypothesis. Okay. Is conversion rate something that you should track or consider as part of SEO? Or is that a completely different job? That's kind of a... It depends answer, which I feel like is very cliche in SEO because everyone says it depends. But I would say it's definitely more of the CRO specialist if you have someone on your team or a UX person who can kind of like modify things. Because, for example, like we're not split testing blog layouts in order to improve conversion rates or changing CTAs in order to drive more newsletter signups, whatever that might look like. So as an SEO company, it's our job to bring you co- bring you traffic and lots of it and make sure that it's the correct traffic, not this meaningless traffic that just looks good on paper. We want it to be actionable traffic. So that's kind of what we're focused on. And then from there, we highly suggest that people work with like their own CMOs or marketing departments or wherever that might look like in order to work on conversion rates for specific lead magnets or trial signups or kind of whatever that is per brand. So is there such a thing as bad traffic? Is there low quality <laughs> traffic? Yeah, surprisingly there is. For example, like imagine if you were a, a tech company and you were trying to sell like a SaaS product and it was a social media widget of some sort. And you have all this traffic around B2C guides, like how to post on Instagram, how to post on LinkedIn, et cetera. But if your audience is B2B, all of those guides are useful to the B2C demographic, but they're not going to convert at all. So it's really about writing guides that draw in your ideal customer. And then from there, you can layer on a intent to sell them something or work them into a nurture sequence. No, so that's where you come in with helping with keyword discovery of those high intent keywords that would provide the good traffic, correct? Yeah, exactly. Or just like, it's pretty common to see the blogs have way too much top of funnel traffic where it might be like if you're selling winter jackets on that's your entire brand. It's like, what is a winter jacket? Or someone's like in pure discovery mode, they have no intention of buying. They're so far removed from pulling out their credit card. I would count that as somewhat meaningless traffic. So really just works on trying to put yourself in the point of view of that customer and that reader and then work backwards from there. Is there, I mean, if you came across a particular client who had a lot of this top of funnel traffic, but it wasn't converting, would there be a way to bridge that to like rescue some of that traffic or would you just start to go to the high intent keywords only? We'd still want to make sure that it's performing the best it can given whatever keywords it's trying to go after. And in that case, what we would probably look at and see if we can spruce up the internal linking of the site and make sure that those URLs are still leveraged as best as possible within the kind of content library within the site. But at the end of the day, maybe there's a lead magnet or a pop-up or something that we can include on that page. We're not CRO or UX experts, but just through working on so many sites and having businesses of our own, we have a lot of like tips and tricks up our sleeve that allow us to 
offer that kind of guidance to customers and clients. And so we'll say, hey, like your imagery is way too big on this featured image, like make it smaller and think about adding a CTA at the top. So we'll come in and work with them as a partner on that. But like I said, we're not like an AV tester or someone who has like scientific data. So we try to like stay off of that front. But yeah, we definitely try to leverage top of funnel however best you can if it's there. Yeah, let me ask you one last question. How does this idea of building these pages around high intent search traffic work within the idea of content silos or content clusters? Is, are those two related or are they separate disciplines? Yeah, so the hub and spoke approach, which is very similar to like the silos you're talking about, what we do is we, that's our kind of normal process strategy. It's still one of the best out there for SEO. And we still do that strategy, but then within each of those subtopics, so like each of the spoke topics per se, we'll just assign a funnel category. So it might say there might be 10 spokes and say three or four are mid funnel, two of them are bottom funnel and there's the rest are top funnel. We'll go after the bottom first and then kind of work our way mid top. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. Well, all right. Career-wise, you've learned a few things over time. If you could go back in a time machine, talk to yourself at the beginning of your career, what thing have you learned now that you wish you would have known then? I would definitely say to like focus on quality over quantity. I still preach that a lot in SEO nowadays, especially as like ChatGPT is coming out and trying to, everyone's trying to get as much content out there as quickly as possible for as cheap as possible. And back in the day when I was in college, it was just like, how do we get as much content on the site? And how do we just rank as much as possible? And I think looking back on that, it had its pros and cons, definitely in the Wild West era of SEO. But at the end of the day, quality always trumps quantity and you'll never really beat that. So less is more again, and just always focusing on creating the best experience for the visitor. That's awesome. All right. So where do you get your inspiration? What are the books or podcasts or events that you find inspiration from? I live in LinkedIn a lot, <laughs> in LinkedIn, I should say. I follow a lot of great creators there. My partners, Nathan Hirsch and Connor Gillivan are two top entrepreneurs. I have a kind of a, a pretty tight LinkedIn group of friends that I kind of see every now and then in real life. And we talk and text every so often. And so making sure that I have a finger on the pulse of what they're doing and vice versa kind of inspires and motivates. And I also follow a, a pretty good number of expert SEOs. So I would say like people have been in this game for 15, 20 years and just are kind of legends. So really just interested in kind of seeing what they're doing and kind of leading off of that. So just follow people who are out there doing it and then yeah. see what they're experimenting with and what's working and what's not. Exactly. And they have, they're always like up to date on the news. So I don't have to follow the news. It's like I can get my <laughs> information <laughs> straight from them. It's, exactly. Like it's just the 80 20 in life, pretty much. Only the good stuff. Yep. All right. Any software or anything that you would recommend to people in as part of this process that might help them? Uh, yeah. Ahrefs. I live in Ahrefs also. It's probably one of the top tools besides SEMrush. SEMrush is definitely a little bit more user friendly in the budget wise category more budget friendly. But at the same time, there's other great tools like SEO Wind. We use that for creating outline briefs, free tools from Google Search Console and Google Analytics. You can't really beat that. But yeah, no, I think that there's definitely ChatGPT is one of them, but be very wary of how you're using it. Don't become too reliant on it. It's still a tool. But yeah, there's new ones popping up every second. So it's hard to stay on top of it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. All right, well, tell us, you know, if people want to connect with you, you're from Trio SEO. Tell us a little bit about that. What does Trio do? What kind of makes you guys unique? And how can people find it online? Yeah, so I'd start with like what makes us as unique as like an SEO content agency is that we're all entrepreneurs first. So with my partner's background, Connor and Nathan, they were they scaled free up, which is like a competitor to Upwork. And they went from a 5K investment to $12 million annual revenue strictly through SEO. And so they're SEO nerds just like I am. And through that, they were able to sell and exit their company. And so all through that, that time, people were asking them for SEO advice and saying, how can you do this for my company and kind of solid success. And now we're able to do that with my strategies and their strategies combined. We are able to do that from a entrepreneurship business focused mindset first. We always like to say that we'll manage your content strategy just like it was one of our businesses, which I think is kind of rare from most SEOs. But yeah, we're just really SEO nerds at the end of the day. We eat, breathe, live it, and really love business at, at two. So we kind of can put different hats on and kind of look at the content strategy from different lenses compared to just like SEO, SEO, SEO. So it's nice to kind of play both sides. But yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active there. 
And you can always just Google Trio SEO, T-R-I-L-S-E-O, and throw in my name and you can find me. I always joke that we're an SEO company, so if you can't find us, we're doing something wrong. <laughs> That's the first thing I always do when an SEO company reaches out to me. I'm like, all right, I'm going to search some SEO keywords and see if they can. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Hey, thanks so much, Stephen. Really appreciate the tips you gave today and really some good things to think about there, attacking those high intent keywords, looking at ways that you can spread those throughout your content clusters. Great advice. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, I appreciate it. Cutting Edge Web Content Development is brought to you by Butter CMS. To find out how you can build better with Butter, stop wasting dev time, and free your marketers from your legacy CMS, visit buttercms.com. Also, make sure to search for Cutting Edge Web Content Development in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Butter CMS, thank you for listening.